Hi, in this video we're going to introduce a topic called delta neutral hedging and talk about how it's influenced by both delta and gamma, two of the Greeks associated with options. And in this example we're going to start by purchasing 20 June 400 call option contracts. Just as a little side note, this is as of January 8th, 2020. So depending on when you view this video, the numbers might look a little different. But in our example, the contracts are going to cost $26 per option. So that would be $2,600 per contract. And then we're buying 20 contracts. The stock price at the time was $377. Some values associated with the option, the estimated volatility going forward through June was 34%, and that gave us the following Greek values. Now let's assume we bought the call options, we were hoping the stock price would go up, and it did. So we're feeling pretty good. We're at March 13th and the stock prices went up from 377 all the way up to $425. So now we ask how much profit have you made on your option contracts? And remember that you have 20 contracts. So to do that, you have 20 contracts. Each contract is for 100 options. The option is currently trading for $44.12 and you originally purchased that contract for $26 per option. And when we go through that calculation, that gives us a profit of $18.12 per option. And altogether, we have 2,000 options. So we made a nice little profit of $36,240 on our position. Well, that's pretty good. We want to maybe lock in those profits. So if we want to take our profits, there's two ways we can do that. One is we can just sell our option contracts in the open market. We go ahead and exit the position, and then we're good. However, another way to do that would be to hedge our position by shorting the stock. So we own a call as the stock price goes up, that's going to cause the value of the call to go up. If we short the stock, we're going to offset that because the short is going to lose money, the call is going to make money. On the other hand, if the stock price falls, our option is going to lose money, but now the short is going to make money. So the question is, if we decide to short, how many shares would you sell so that if Boston Beer, Samuel Adams company, drops by one dollar, you're going to make as much on your short position as you lose on your option position. Now the key to this is understanding delta. If you remember when we talked about delta, delta measures how sensitive the option price is to a change in the value of the underlying stock. So when this says delta is 0.6755, that means if the stock price goes up by a dollar, each option will go up by 67.55 cents. The stock goes down by a dollar, each option will go down by 67.55 cents. So in order to hedge, we're not going to short 2,000 shares, we're going to short 2,000 shares times the delta. So we take the 2,000, that's the number of shares that we're exposed to through our options and multiply by 0 0.6755. And when we do that, we get a value of 1,351 shares. So that's how many shares you're going to short. And that's going to create what we call a delta neutral hedge because we've shorted the number of shares equivalent to offset the impact of our call options, we are effectively delta neutral. A dollar increase in the stock price should not make us any money. A dollar decrease in the stock price should not make us any money. They're gonna exactly offset our call and our shorts. So now we fast forward, and it's a week later. Remember, we entered this delta neutral hedge on March 13th 
and now it's March 20th. So weeks gone by, we were worried that the stock price might drop. Sure enough, it did in this example. So the stock price fell from $425 to $395. And so now we want to see, okay, what was the profit or loss on this delta neutral hedge that we set up? Well, we want to start by looking at the loss on our options. And remember, we have 20 contracts, 100 shares per contract. And now the contract is trading at $25.12. Previously, it was trading for $44.12. And so we just took a loss on that position of $19 per option. And that is a generating a $38,000 loss. Fortunately, we had offset that by shorting the stock. So we have a gain on our short position. Now we shorted 1,351 shares. The stock is currently trading for 395. That's how much we're going to be able to buy back by. But it was 425 when we shorted them. So we originally got the 425, but now we can buy it back for 395, which means we're making $30 per share for every share that we sold short. So we multiply that $30 by 1,351, and we end up with a profit on our short of $40,530. You know, if you look at this, we lost 38,000, but then we turned around and made 40,230. So we have a net gain of 2,530. Which brings up the question, why is that answer not zero? We said when we created this delta neutral hedge that we were offsetting our risk exposure. Turns out we didn't offset it, we actually generated a profit when the stock price fell? Well, the answer for the delta neutral hedge is that if the stock price moves dramatically in the short run, then we are going to make a profit regardless of whether the stock price falls like it did here or if it goes up further. And that's because of gamma and delta. So if you know, when we created this delta neutral hedge, our delta was 0.6755 and the gamma was 0 0.0048. Gamma measures how delta changes when the stock price changes. So as the stock price goes down, our delta is going to decline, which means we're actually going to lose less on the options than we anticipated. Now, what if the stock price would have went up? If the stock price goes up, this gamma is going to cause our delta to increase. It will get closer to one, which means we're actually going to make more on the call options than we anticipated. So because delta is not constant, it changes as the stock price changes. We will lose less than anticipated on the calls when the stock price declines, and we'll make more on the calls than we anticipated when the stock price goes up. This creates an opportunity for us to make extra money regardless of whether the stock price goes up or goes down. Well, that sounds great, right? And it is, as long as the stock price moves quickly. But remember, there were more than just delta and gamma in our Greeks. We also have theta. Theta measures time decay. As the option moves closer and closer to expiration, all else equal, that speculative premium associated with the option is going to shrink, which means we're going to be losing money. Now, in our example here, we went from March 13th to March 20th. Only seven days went by. 
the options don't expire until the third Friday in June, wasn't that big of a time decay, so the delta gamma relationship offset that. On the other hand, if it takes a lot longer for the stock price to move, the story's going to be a lot different. So let's follow up with our last part of this question. Instead of falling to 395 per share in a week, let's assume that it took a couple months to get there and it didn't fall to 395 until May 8th. Now what happens? So now let's take a look at the loss on our options. And again, we have 20 option contracts, 100 shares per contract. Now the value of the option is going to fall to $16.19 from the original $44.12 that we could have gotten when we looked at the start of the position. So that is going to translate into a loss of $27.93 per option on 2,000 total options for $55,860 loss. Now the flip side is our short position didn't change. We still sold short 1,351 shares. The value at the time we sold short was $425. The value when we, reco or when we recover that short is $395. So we make $30 per short are $40,530. And what you're going to see here, just adjust so that I don't go to the next page, what we're going to see here is that our net loss is going to be pretty substantial now. As a matter of fact, our net loss is $15,330. So this delta neutral hedge was great if the stock price moved in the short run so that the delta gamma effect more than offset the time decay. However, if it takes a long time to move, then the time decay is going to be a bigger factor. Delta neutral hedging is a great strategy if the stock price moves quickly. However, if the stock price does not move quickly, it's a bad strategy because we're going to lose far more from time decay. So this is one of the more complicated option strategies that traders can employ something that I personally have not done and don't plan to do, but it is a strategy that you'll see some traders try to apply in order to take advantage of short-term changes. In my mind, the risk of time decay more than offsets the benefit from potential short-term changes. It's not a strategy that I plan to incorporate, but again, it is a strategy that some investors will use. Thank you.